how we're gonna start this video welcome everybody it's new well it's all come down to this we're here it's showtime i am giving you the best curation farm of the league in my opinion the most lucrative farm curation farm league and notice i'm not saying curation barrel and go i'm saying curation full stop how can i make such a claim well every league i go out of my way to try to bring you guys you know in endeavoring to min max the fun out of the game i try to find the best strategy long term all the way to the end of the league it's usually somewhere point mid league point and here we are a little later than normal uh, last league it was what was it plus two projectiles unidentified corrupted abyss six modded maps infliction league really hit the bullseye with that one that was absolutely the case sometimes i miss the mark a little bit I don't feel as confident this time as I did last league, but I really do think barrels is the way. It's going to surprise a lot of people. I know the perception out there still, still to this time, uh, very much that juicing is absolutely required. You got to be doing delirium beyond. You got to be doing uh, the shrines and what is it? The ambush and ritual shape or all flames or maybe rats and imbue beyond gonna be just something like that crazy you solo group whatever that's the best but i don't think so and the reason i don't think so is because i've tested it i've consulted now with a lot of the community even with red vials himself who's something of a godfather figure for juiced curation farming i mean the guy's done hundreds of maps uh testing minutia differences i did his farms by the letter and they're good farms but uh, my results, well, basically, long story short, the maps I'm doing today, they cost about half as much as the very best perceived farms of the league right now. Talking like quadruple shape or all flames uh, maps. It costs about half as much. You get about, uh, you get about half as much loot. So breaking kind of even there. But here's the kicker. They take about a third of the time, maybe a quarter of the time. They're ridiculously fast compared to the crazy high juice other stuff. And the maps are easier to roll too. And that's a big one because I know the very next thing people are going to say, well, you got to roll the maps. You got to do all that stuff. Yeah, you still got to roll the maps. Don't get me wrong. Got a regex link down below for that. The latest one. Uh, but these are pretty easy to roll. We're going all the way back to roots and embracing, truly embracing the barrel loot by prioritizing quantity, area quantity of all things. And of course the barrel roll. So right out the gate, every single map I have 140% or more item quantity on the roll and 37 or more barrels. And that's it. That's the secret. There's really nothing beyond that. Uh, how do I get that? Well, I'll show you in just a second, I guess. I'm going to go through this in the order that I usually go. This is the Atlas I was using for the Super Juice stuff. And, you know, I, I did a tiny little variation to Alva instead of Shrine. But basically it's the same. And, you know, just evidence that, of course, I was testing all kinds of different things. This is the Atlas for Back to Basics. It's the one that everybody's been using the whole time. Once again, you can put points in here for six passives. You can get three quant if you want to drop scarabs. Fine, if you want. I never did it. Uh, but I contend perhaps it is technically better to do that in a min-max sense. Otherwise, everything else should look basically the same. It is a barrel and go strat, so scarabs and currency are still some things that you're finding. But that's not changed. This is essentially part three of the Curation Barrel and Go endeavor. The first part was Preservation Scarab. That one's gone up a bit. Very good farm. Very fast map. Didn't really care about the roll on the maps. It was definitely the most brain dead strat of them all. <laughs> but at a certain point, you got to uh, stop doing it when the Preservation Scarab gets too expensive relative to the Curation. Second time around, I was a little bit, or actually a lot more methodical. Antagonist mod, more rares with barrels. Didn't care about the barrel roll, didn't care about the quant roll. Was relying on some shaper all flames, elder all flames, trying to min max best I could. Did not turn out nearly as well as I hoped. It was obvious to me pretty early on that would not be the best strat. This time, gone back to fully embracing barrel loot. So that is the long and short of it. Let's get into what uh, the mapping supplies or investment consists of. We're going to be using Double Divination Scarab. You absolutely have to if you're relying on Barrel Loot because any sort of bloodlines or anything else is not going to be or not going to impact the drops there. So absolutely mandatory Double Divination. 
curation and completion, of course, going to be in there. Again, the curation scarab is actually on its way down right now, down to around 11 div a piece. It, it had risen up suddenly. It spiked up, and now it's kind of falling a little bit. Uh, so the scarabs are around 11 and a half, between 11 and a half and 12 div for the whole set. The maps, you already talked about it a little bit. The maps all have a, whole, a very high scare or a very high barrel roll. Well, pretty high barrel roll and pretty high, better than average quant roll at 140 plus. And if you want to get a sense of these maps, this is the page, PODB, where you can see all the tier 17 map mods. You'll see all the maps roll with either bonus currency, bonus scarab, bonus maps, bonus pack size, or bonus rarity. And all of them roll, effectively roll with bonus quant. They all just give more quant than any tier 16 or red map mod. So the secret to the strat, the map rolling, essentially involves you trying to hit as many tier 17 mods as you possibly can. That's it. Uh, and of course it needs to have barrels on it. Preferably a high roll. If you get a map that's loaded with a ton of tier 17 rolls, well, I mean, you get this. This, as you can see here, I got uh, barrels. I got reduced effect of curses. That's tier 17 mod. Uh, buffs expire 100% faster. It's tier 17. Two grasping vines on hit. Tier 17 mod. And then the really big one here, evidently, for some reason, this one gives a lot more quant than the rest. Rare and unique monsters remove 10% of life, mana, and energy shield from players. So this is five out of six tier 17 mods, and that's why it's 179 quant. And it just happens to have a bunch of, you know, the other stuff, too. No pack size mod. I would like pack size, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not mandating there's a pack size roll in here. I'm not mandating there's a currency roll in here. I'd like those things, but those really don't matter. When, you know, you just kind of throw your hands up in the air and say, all right, well, if, it's, if barrels is the way, we're just going to go all in. All in on the barrel loot. And whatever you see at the end of the result, that's what it's going to be. So you can fast forward to that in the timestamps <laughs> if you would like. But, yeah, once again, you can see... Uh, this is all the roles, and you can look at this page, you can see the numbers if you want. A few of these have a little bit of an outlier in the quant roll, like all monster damage can ignite, freeze, and shock, slightly more quant. Um, this mod here, rare monsters, unique monsters, remove 10% life, slightly more quant, but m like all of them give at least 20, at least 20% quant, so they're all good. All of them. Now, obviously, you can only run maps that you can run, and so it does kind of require you to have a pretty strong character. It goes without saying, it was that way last league, and Affliction League, obviously, for the best farm. And that is kind of the main theme of the best strategy in a given league. It's always going to be a strat that costs more, a lot more than most strats in terms of investment. It's going to be a strat that's higher risk than most strats, of course, in terms of getting your money back. In other words, you run a couple maps, you're probably going to lose money. It's one of those kind of strats. And it's a strat that requires a stronger character than most. This absolutely falls within that rubric uh, there. And, you know, they, this usually ends up being basically a high-stakes divination farm. In, in most leagues, it's something to do with Crimson Temple divination, apothecary farming. Uh, but the Crimson Temple has finally been bested here by Tier 17 maps, I guess. So once again, I will be showcasing the divination weightings here. I will be checking the common cards, referencing them against the weightings for the rare cards, and we'll figure out uh, a proper... A calculation about how much currency I should be making, at least in all of these cards. So uh, we'll do that like usual. Once again, this is linked as a resource as well. The Divination Stack Deck Weightings from Prohibited Library 3.23 is the best source of info we have to the Stack Deck Weightings. I tend to believe this pretty well. I, I don't really see any major outliers. This is pretty awfully high sample size that was used from a variety of different players, thousands upon thousands of you know, in some cases, tens of thousands of, of stack decks were opened by individual players. And I guess there were like 10 different players who did it. So I suppose that there are 194,000 cards in total uh, were open. So, I mean, that's a pretty good sample size. The best thing we have right now. And yeah. So the total investment of the strategy. Little data there. It's going to be, oh yeah, regex right here. Or no, that's a different regex. Sorry, the one that I got linked in the description. It's that one. <laughs> but anyway, a few different regexes I've been building up in my stockpile. 1,350 divine, 13.5 divines per map. And again, a super juiced quadruple shaper all flame strat is around 
you know, 28, 29 divine. So this is about half of that. This is actually less than half of that. And I, I think at least, at least half as much loot. The all flames I'll be using will be a variety of different breach all flames. And another epiphany I've had lately is that it looks like as far as cheap all flames to be used on a, on a strat like this, it would seem that breaches are probably the best. So I think, I think what's going on here is the breach all flames give the highest pack size for no penalty monsters. So rats and frogs have penalties on their quant evidently. Shape or cost too much as maybe a quant bonus. Elder seems to be pretty even handed and is not a bad one. But as far as like cheap all flames that you get decent value out of, it looks like Breach. I mean, people are starting to figure out, I think now Breach is probably the best for this. Just overall best value. And so that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, four Breach Scarabs on each one. We'll go ahead and start a map here. I think this is my best rolled map, 179 quant. Of course, I want to show the front, the best one first. Because why not, right? And I can run almost every map mod. There are a few things I absolutely won't run, like Mark for Death. Um, no damage for 4 seconds out of 10. Sucks as well. Uh, but, you know, just about everything. No problem. I right, just make sure I got the right Atlas here. Of course, we're doing back to basics. And everything evens out, you know. The, th the funny thing is, if I score like an 80% back to basics, I'll get as much, as many drops, if not more, than I would on a crazy super juice investment map. But that's obviously not the norm. Uh, but just to give you a sense, give you an idea of that. All right, so that's good. We'll kick this off. Send this back to game mode. Really don't care too much about this here. So many chat asking about favorited maps. I got the Atlas linked below or on the Twitch. We got a command for that exclamation point. Atlas will reveal that number for you as well. Okay, so this is kind of nothing special Atlas. Kind of hard one, actually. Nothing good. I mean, you can see the pack size 20 to 27 monsters is going to be big. And when I get, you know, a lot of tier 17 mods are rolled on there. Some of them are pack size. The pack size of these mobs can get pretty high, which will hopefully give you some insight that the best strategy does involve having to run uh, Magic Find on your gear. At least if you want the absolute best results, you're going to need Magic Find on gear. But I don't necessarily think you have to have it on there. So I'm looking at these numbers here, especially with my barrel rolls. If I score under 100 barrels, that means my back to basics roll is not very good. Or at least below average. So this is not a good map. I got unlucky with it. But anyway, here we go. First map. We'll see what happens. So just bear in mind the amount of loot that you're seeing on this map right now is below average. Below average. And yet you're still going to see a decent amount. You'll still see the uh, the quantity is 364. Yeah, I think that number could have actually gone to about 600% on this map. This is a very low uh, back to basics roll. Remember, it started at 179. <laughs> okay, well, we'll be tracking everything as well in the overlay, just like we've been doing for fun. I think I'm going to not track enlightened cards now, though. Perhaps if I, uh, I can, uh, abuse the law of attraction by not paying attention to them and fewer of them will drop what do you think guys not tinfoil hat i hope pretty consistent pretty consistent loot okay i mean yeah 492 percent more currency will do that for you barrel drops a divine orb no surprise there. Somebody asked earlier if I run the action speed mod. No, that, that's another one of the mods that I don't run. There's four mods that I'm not running. Uh, and now I remember what three of them are. I can't remember what the other one is. Oh, the other one. Oh, nice. Brother's Gift. The other one. Okay, so I remember. The mods are Marked for Death, 
four, damage, four seconds out of 10 seconds, no damage. Uh, reduced action speed per ability used recently and 50% less area of effect. Now I can still run 50% less area of effect. It's just annoying. It, it really does just stunt my damage. I am willing to run uh, zero extra damage on crits. <laughs> that that does more damage than 50% less than having 100% less area of effect in the end. It's just absolutely crippling uh, for whatever reason with eye shot or lightning arrow. Um, yeah, that, that mod just sucks. All right, well, that was pretty Frogs. fast. Double red star on both sides. Well, one of them was good. The other one, uh, not so good. But fair, but fair, because I'm actually up on gifts. We got our best uh, back to basics roll so far. Still not incredible or anything, but good. Another brother's gift stack. Wow. Brother's gifts less common than seven years, guys. I swear. Shape or all flame? All right. All right. What else can I get? How's the card farm going? Uh. You know, the usual stuff's dropping. Just the usual. Patch to something, anyway, with that. God, I'm gonna... I'm definitely gonna max out my inventory on this. Brothers, what in the world? Every map just keeps dropping enlightens and gifts. I don't know what's going on. I cannot get... I can't even get seven years bad luck. What is going on? He rolled. Maybe that's one. Maybe that's one. Cope. Oh, it's actually better. All right. Well, still on the zero seven years bad luck train here. <laughs> See, this mob right here can kill me. And this is a way way harder map because it's got mobs have AOE and increased life. Sixty six percent reflect. Thirteen seven years bad luck. Let's see if I get absolutely annihilated. So, I mean, I, I should, you know, based on two maps ago, I should just get completely annihilated on this map. have no chance whatsoever. This is what I still don't understand. He's definitely going to get nerfed, definitely going to get, and then it doesn't get nerfed. See, look at that guy, Kiznai. Just like, just like I said, somebody says, "Oh, there's no way it's not gonna get nerfed next league. No possible way." And it doesn't get nerfed. Yeah, but now they have to. Whoa, whoa! All right, made a little bit of money on this map. That's a little bit of money. I was just saying how I never get good RNG with the Nimbus card. Here comes good old Chris Wilson trolling. Gotta troll me now. One passive voices. A cool three mirrors. Actually, I got a discount. Streamer discount, 2.9 mirrors. Hey man, 2.9 mirrors, that's like 100 divines. Almost. It's like 80, it was like 83 divines or something. Not, not exactly House of Mirrors, but alright. Okay. So glad I have that on my loot filter.
Of course. Mid roll. Manifested wealth. All flame. Dude, that shit's like more rare than unrequited love, man. What the hell? Syndicate guards. Mm. <gasps> Divination. Scarab of Curation dropped. Alright. I might actually make my money back on this map, guys. Ooh. That is a deep, deep fog red star, guys. We got a deep red star in the fog. Very high chance to be extreme about. Oh my god, two more right there. Valdo's puzzle box on the side, okay. But I've yet to see the one that was the deepest. This is the deepest red star. Right here. What did I say? What I say, the, the lucky, lucky red star again, again. It's real, guys. It's real. Another curation, two curation scarabs in a row. Notice that the shallow one dropped divination scarab of completion, but the deep one dropped divination scarab of curation, which is normally much rarer. But I tweaked the drop rate by dropping it deep in the fog. Thirteen, seven years. Okay. A little bit of a pick-me-up there. Yup. Say like, tup, 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 pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Divine orbs, pick it up. We got more currency roll too, nice. Yeah, this, this is going to max out my inventory on this map. Definitely. I'm already, yeah, like halfway done with the map. It's crazy. I basically drop as much loot this map as I would on a crazy juice map. Oh, great. The rarest card on the filter. Awesome. Alright, so that card is twice as rare as Unrequited Love. WTF, dude. They're just very high pack size. Another good barrel roll. Breach frame... Breach... All flames are very high pack size. And unlike rats or frogs, they're like the next best thing after rats and frogs, if you just look at the numbers. But they don't have a penalty, a drop penalty. Ooh, one Nimbus card. Oh, it is. Curation Scarab. Oh, sorry, I'm not losing currency this map. Get punked. How do you sell your div cards? Uh, I usually don't. The only ones I sell are unrequited love because it sells for so much more than the turn in. Everything else I turn in. One, seven years. Just came here and you nailed it. Oh, you're gonna leave now that I dropped a curation scarab. Huh? Oh, and the one apothecary. Wait, where's my? Apothecary stack. Hey, guys, did you see that Apothecary dropped off an actual... Oh, wow, and a brother's gift. Oh, my God. Wow, losing currency is fun, guys. Holy crap. Uh, you see that dropped off a monster? I just want to report that that Apothecary did not come out of a barrel. 100%. Not out of a barrel. Oh, this is pretty sad, though. Like, I dropped the seven years, didn't stack it. I dropped the Apothecary, didn't stack it. Then I dropped a brother's gift... And of course I stacked it. Why do I gotta get unlucky like that? 
Never lucky. Never lucky. And my god, these mobs. 311% more life. Somebody got a high back to basics roll. <laughs> Maybe I'll just drop one of every card on this map. So I, I had the I had the bingo. I just gotta drop a Nimus card and an unrequited love in this map. What? Another curation scarab. All right. I mean, th this is like bingo bonus. Here we'll get the six link bingo. Here get the curation scarab too. Still seems right. to drop loot like a regular mob. Unlike rats or frogs. Freaking love possessed mob. Another curation scarab. Wow. All right. So this is actually giving me some nice affirmation that I wasn't talking out of my ass when I said in the last 200 map set that I was getting ripped off by how few curation scarabs I was dropping in a barrel and go. Actually seeing some reasonable curation scarab drops in this barrel and ghost rat. Oh nice, a gift again. I'm getting a little tired of seeing that card though. <laughs> I have like no appreciation for brother's gift card anymore. I want the bigger ones. Go bigger. Got a nice back to basics roll. Pretty rare to have 500% quant on the map. As well, with a solid uh, scarab and currency roll, could see a raw mirror on this map. Scarab of completion? No. Not that one. Bloodlines. Another star. Enlighten. Oh my god, I'm getting all the I'm getting all the debate loot right now. All the Jabate loot, what? Completion, bloodlines, st stash, enlighten, uh, every bad red star is dropping. No, one seven year, all right, ramping. I mean, that's a little bit better, ramping. One seven years. Uh-oh, another red star. Hmm. Oh, no. No. The nightmare. No, it's the nightmare. It's the worst thing that can happen. Twice as rare as the unrequited card. No. Well, this session is, is actually doomed. I'm just straight up doomed. If that happens. I'm not even going to find one unrequited in this whole session, I'm pretty sure. Drop the fiend twice. Proc completion once. Uh, I guess seven years, though. Wow. That that Raider RNG though. Full stack of Nimus, followed by a full stack of Brother Stash. Whoa. And one seven years bad luck again. Oh, okay, well. This is my my bad back to basics roll. <laughs> Well, it's cute to see my RNG turn around swiftly for the Nimus card that I've been getting wrecked on for the past <laughs> so many farms. Suddenly, uh, that's coming back with a vengeance here. I mean, you're more likely to drop it just from a elder Eldritch Influence Divination card drop anyway. Oh boy, drop the Sephiroth. Couldn't even complete dude. That would have actually been an awesome completion. That would have been like 10 divines. Oh man. Yeah. Here we go everybody. We are getting the results to you now. 
Well, I got it right in front, and you see a bunch of minus signs in front of you. Negative. So, I don't know if and when the last time I ever did a farm and actually came out negative. This might be the first time in history uh, where I personally lost currency doing a farm. And isn't it ironic? I opened the video uh, saying this would be the most lucrative farm of the league, curation farm of the league. And I still stand by that. I still stand by that because uh, I did check the math on that, thank God. Uh, normalizing the results all along the way to keep things consistent. Otherwise, this would look pretty strange. So let's get into the numbers and show you what happened here. I will start with the dump tabs. Got A, B, C, D, E. And had to open up a couple extras to fit everything in. So that is all of it. We have the overlay, which reveals a very sad state of affairs. A couple of silver linings. Got a lot of curation scarabs. That's probably because I had really high quant rolls and everything had scarab rolls and some of them had bonus scarabs. So I think, you know, it was just... I had it owed to me to get more than two or three curation scarabs. I don't know why the past couple hundred maps, uh, my barrel and ghost strat was resulting in only two or three or maybe four curations. Got ten this time. Uh, maybe that's lucky, not sure. Everything else is unlucky, <laughs> basically. Or or the right number. Um, Nimbus cards, Brothers Gifts came out about right. Uh, everything else just atrociously bad. Zero unrequited loves. And... Yeah, I guess the Divine Orb amount is okay, but anyway. Here is the full picture. 1,200 Divines, and if you see here, uh, the investment was 1,350, so down 150 Divines. Fortunate cards are all there. Seven you know, Now, usually, or at least last time, Seven Years of Bad Luck was way up high on the list. Uh, Unrequited Love was on the top of the list, and Fortunate was number three. So Fortunate is... Uh, way out in first place this time. Uh, that's a bad sign. Uh, it means you didn't get lucky in any grand particular way. Uh, but yeah, the breakdown is all here. The usual picture. One Valdo puzzle box. No mirror drop. No Hinecor lock either. So no, you know, jackpot. I'm no mage blood. Mage blood would not be expected with this farm. Uh, but yeah, I would expect to get maybe a Hinecoras or, you know, one Hinecor every couple of hundred maps, perhaps. I uh, probably expect that. But anyway, uh, here we go. We got the full results here. Okay. So, what you're seeing now is page three. All right. We had the first one, and this was a preservation scarab. And again, the, the magic numbers were this and this over here. And uh, this was with, unfortunately, a preservation scarab cost of around five div but anyway it would go up to around 9.12 div so so this number would hold pretty solid overall and then we did the curation double divination farm and i got a, a an average div value of 14.28 across these 12 cards so that looked nice and that was with the antagonist roll with any barrel roll and running some Shaper All Flames, some additional investment cost there. This time, the exact same number came up at the end. Unrequited Love, seven years have gone up a bit. Nimbus Card and Apothecary has gone down a bit. And you'll notice a similar number here. Okay, so so this is, this is the closest apples to apples I have uh, compared to a previous farm. 0.45 and then 0.47. So I actually dropped more cards with this strat with no Shaper All Flame. Mind you, just Breach All Flames. I don't know how much the Breach All Flames contributed to this. I don't think all that much. Uh, but that was an important data point for me just to verify that I could get. Uh, you know, that is kind of what solidified in my head why this strat is better than the last strat is because the last strat produced these kind of numbers. This strat produced slightly better numbers with no Shaper All Flames. And that's a big deal because that's a huge... I think I used like 35 30, or 40 Shaper All Flames last time. So it's not, a, not like every map or anything. But it absolutely contributed and it added a whole bunch of time. So last time it took me 8 hours to do the farm. This time it took about 6.5 hours to do the farm. Uh, because I wasn't waiting on portals to spawn. I wasn't dealing with uh, you know really tanky rares. Uh, the maps in general were just kind of easier to just quickly clear. I also didn't even bother killing the boss. <laughs> 
on like half the maps this time. Uh, but anyway, yeah, everything showing up here about the same. Slight fluctuations in the market, mirrors going up, everything else kind of going down. So it paints about the same picture you would normally expect. Another interesting point is that I actually dropped fewer fortunates this time. So I even got unlucky on fortunate cards. <laughs> But the highest div per map is the Fortunate, 7 years, and Unrequited. So those are the major money makers. Those are the ones that matter. That's where the RNG matters the most. And I just got absolutely obliterated. Uh, because last time I got almost 207 years bad luck. This time I got 50. Last time I got 18 Unrequited Loves. This time I got 0. <laughs> and last time somehow far more fortunate. So that is why there's a massive shift from last... The last session, I personally earned like 130 div an hour. This time, I earned negative 25 div an hour. That's how that happened. Uh, the enormous shift in unrequited in seven years is basically where that happened. No mage blood, I guess, a small part of that. But yeah, the important thing is normalized loot. Data numbers come out pretty solid as expected and, and even favorable, slightly favorable. So I'm in relatively good spirits about that. Uh, and I, I, st I still hold by the statement I said earlier. I think this is maybe not exactly the best farm, but certainly in the right direction. Prioritizing quant. Uh, and anyway, kind of getting ahead of myself with that final thoughts. But for now, we got to get into a little bit of gambling. Because I guess I got a few mad kings to turn in and a few enlightens to Val. So we'll see what happens. It's time. Looks pretty familiar from last time. Better RNG on the Mad King turn-ins. That's some good omens. I need that RNG where I can get it. <laughs> Once again, one Val's Doze puzzle box is Belt of the Deceiver. I actually do know what that is. I know for a fact that's garbage. Um, oh wait, wasn't there something about people doing these maps for profit? Like MFing? Oh, they wouldn't do that because we got the other tier 17 maps, I guess. People don't do that, right? They don't still MF the old school T17 maps, do they? <laughs> Six enlightens. Let's get, uh, let's see. As long as I get at least one four, I'm doing good. Just need one. Just one. One. Okay. One up, no down. 15 divines in the bank. And not even worth messing with Whoop. okay my chat says i should probably get a 150 out of this because if i get one 150 uh that will make up for all of the bad rng so i just need one 150 it's not that big of a deal i think we got this guys i, I really like basically recoup all my losses in that aha uh -huh. right the moment you're all waiting for number one the adorned 57 uh wow that's not worth anything number two 58 oh we're ramping guys <laughs> i mean up is better than down and believe me, down, I've had enough of that today. 138. 138. All right. Well, at least I... Hey, this is 50 divines. This is 50 divines. All right. I'm like, I'm like dead even. I'm actually ahead of these three. Next one. 142. 142. Hey, now. Hey, now. I think, I, I think I'm up. I think I'm doing all right. 75 div. Notice I really am ramping. I mean, there's no way the next one isn't go higher. I mean, it went 57 to 58 and then boom, skyrocketed 138 and now 142. So I mean, this is basically at least 146. This last one. Oh, 130. All right. Well, I mean, it, it's down, but it's not down much. It's not down much. Okay. I mean, yeah, I can't complain. I can't complain about that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Streamer luck. Get out of here with the streamer luck, man. The streamer client is, uh, I sent it out for repairs. 
after this farm okay and that will take us to the final thoughts of this farm so like i said uh it's all right you know like i mentioned you know earlier this league this is a super high stakes farm uh even 100 maps is not really a proper set to get a sense of the farm with just how crazy the stakes are the investment's really high the challenge is actually not that bad like you do have to have a certain kind of character to do this map but it's not that bad uh but compared to the stakes and the investment uh the challenges shall we say this the least of our concerns for this farm uh it didn't pan out this time i couldn't have gotten much worse rng i think that again the curation scarab was really the only thing that stands out to me as being like wow i feel like i actually got lucky on that one thing and that's a very small portion of the currency earning so when i do the normalized numbers that come out to let's see uh we actually go back down here i think we will show this again 83.67 div and now the preservation scarab farm was a higher number than this but that's because the preservation scarab was uniquely undervalued and underpriced at the time it is since not as good as this anymore this is at the current time i really do think this this 83 div per hour is probably about the best i could do on average for a curation scarab farm mm, i don't know maybe maybe the juice farming can do better i'm not sure uh, but i do want to make one final note here i readjusted the numbers on the uh the normalized loot and input the divination scarab of curation one divine cheaper because it for some reason, it moved down a lot uh, between the time that I started this set and the time I finished. A lot, like a full divine and a half. It went from like 11 and a half divines all the way down to 10 in bulk. Right now, at the time of recording this ending, uh, it's about 10 divines in bulk. So I don't know why. Uh, suddenly, a bunch of people are just offloading them. Uh, maybe the meat sacks farmers finally decided to turn their <laughs> scarabs in. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but if the divination scarab of curation is around 10 div, a piece then it should be around 83 div per hour and on that note i had just mentioned it's not really a great sample size to 100 i see a golden opportunity to stick it out and do a thousand maps of this session so i'm going on record now i'm going to do a thousand maps i don't mind the barrels farming it is fun enough it, it's peculiarly fun it grows on me a bit i like the stakes i got plenty of currency now the character is basically done uh, the next video will probably feature the character in full as it is uh, of course i may find some cool ways to upgrade it from then recently on the previous session i did make a lot of currency i went ahead and got a three or one pass of voices uh, but that really didn't grant me a whole lot of power <laughs> ironically but yeah, I would like to see this through. I'm, I'm making a bold claim here by saying this is such a good strat. I want to see after a thousand maps how much currency I make. We'll look at it cumulatively. We'll start with a hundred and then we'll go from there. And I'll probably come out negative again on at least one of them. Maybe two of them. I don't know. I'll probably make 200 div an hour on one of them. It'll be crazy. We'll see. Maybe I'll get like a couple of I'll drop. I'll drop raw mirrors. I almost guarantee you, you'll see at least one raw mirror drop in a thousand maps so look forward to that uh, but that is my plan uh, there's you know the last epoch released a thing i'd like to play it again but it's not coming out till july this league is going to keep going on for a while i don't have anything else coming up uh, that's really exciting so i think uh with the crazy core changes and who knows if the barrel thing is here to stay kind of prefer not uh, but there's a brand new meta and it's a brand new way to farm divination cards it's pretty cool and I think I will have enough fun to go ahead and do a 1,000 map sample size. So we'll log them into the spreadsheet just like we've been doing. And we'll see what happens. It should be exciting to see. So come along for the ride. I'll be on Twitch a lot, I guess, <laughs> for the next couple of weeks. We'll knock all those out. It's pretty quick maps, so it's nice. And that's all I got for this farm. Didn't turn out well this time, but on the back end, normalized numbers. They look good. They look promising. And I'm willing to... Uh, put my money where my mouth is and farm it out for a thousand maps basically this strat probably this strat i might do i'm thinking about doing no all flames for the first set of 100 because that would 
help me figure out if All Flames is actually making an impact or not. I'm thinking it would just kind of be nice to see. But I definitely think the Breach All Flames is good. As long as it's cheap. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. And we'll see about this character. I'll be putting on the gloves Soul Ascension back on for the showcase for sure. Mm-hmm.